an interesting thing. The, the, I don't want to get too heavy with it, but the conceptualization of God that he allows each one of us to have. And it is very true that nobody, but nobody can imitate or duplicate your conceptualization of God. The way you think about God and the manner in which you hold him and, and deal with him in your personal esteem cannot be duplicated or imitated by anybody else. I say that because the uniqueness of your concept of God is like pain. And that is that I could lose my father, you could lose your father, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we feel the same pain. I've heard people say at funerals many times, I've been where you are. Uh, the truth is, uh, you lost a father like I did, but you have not been where I am. Because the individual has a uniqueness as it relates to how they feel. In the same way that God is outside of our sensual perception and he leaves himself outside of our cognitive ability to relate to him, we are now left by faith with a conceptualization of God that either gets us over and through what we face or it allows us to be depressed and sad because our concept of God is not bigger than our problems. Are you still with me? The concept of God then, no matter who expostulates him or who presents him to you, he has to come through the revelatory experience that you have with him to the point where your individual concept of God supersedes anything and everything that would cause you difficulties. It's what you believe. It's really not what you actually go through, but your perception of God is based on the conceptualization of God. And that either gets you over and beyond or you capitulate and fall down. It's what I think about God that is going to deliver me and bring me out of the circumstances or situations of my life, regardless of who has targeted or tagged me in a way that is negative. It's how I think about God that's going to either deliver me and set me free from the entanglements and the contamination that operates within the parameters of my everyday living. If you have a concept of God, now notice, uh, and I'm a little bit off from the text as it relates to this, I'm sort of putting some sort of substratum down so that I can bring it to the text, I hope. But when you understand then, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or even think. The, the, the important piece here is that you ought to think something. It, it doesn't matter how effervescent, it doesn't matter how lucid, it doesn't matter how, how powerful your thoughts are. You cannot connive a thought that is equal to the magnanimous, splendiferous power that God displays. But you ought to think something. Because in your thinking, you bring yourself to the place where you look at what is around you and you know you will have the victory because the conceptualization of your God is bigger than the situation or the circumstance that you're dealing with. Ah, I feel it here. The higher then that you raise him in your mind is the higher you raise yourself. Because as a man thinking, in his heart, so is he. So it behoves me then to have a conceptualization of God that is larger than the circumstances that I have to deal with. So instead of approaching my problems with complaints, I approach my problems with praise because my problem is just an opportunity for my God to reveal himself. Uh, I'm not going to keep you long. Uh, I feel something happening. It's important here because Hezekiah's name simply means Jehovah is strength. 
And I don't know about you, but I found out that in difficult times of life, everybody has and needs support. Uh, I grew up under the impression that uh, I was taught growing up that man means manage. And I had, uh, you know, this sort of independent kind of maniacal kind of egotistical disposition that I really didn't need support. I found out when I was going through one of the worst times in my life, and that was doing my divorce, that it was good to have even one of your children to lean on you and, and say, Dad, it's going to be all right. And I've discovered now that in the hard times of life, that God sends somebody to deal with you who becomes the personification of his encouragement. And say, you got to know who's in your space. Because in your space, you can find people who will further aid and abet your depression. Or you can find somebody who will contradistinctively and antithetically go against how you're feeling and put in your spirit a feeling that no matter where you are, the victory is already yours. Anytime you're dealing with a man whose name is God is strength. You're dealing with somebody who's not about to capitulate to anything that the devil has to offer because he's already convinced that the God I serve is able to deliver me out of any situation. Uh, when God is your support, can, can you just think about that for a minute? I don't have you as my support. I have God as my support. I have the creator of the heavens and earth. I have the one who orchestrates, manipulates, and who operates in a way that nobody else can touch him. And when he declares that I am your back, I have your back, I am your back, I am your back up. Whenever you can believe that God is on your side, it changes the dynamics of everything that you deal with in life. I don't approach it with sadness. I don't approach it with depression because God is my support. So whatever my problems are, no matter how it comes to me, I am convinced that weeping may endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning because God is my support. Uh, I wish you'd look somebody in the face and tell them God handles my business. Uh, with all of his problems, Hezekiah was regarded as one of the best kings of Judah. And it's interesting that here is a man who prayed for long life and asked God for more years. I studied to ask, why is he praying? And I noted something. One is that the worst king that ever ruled in Israel was a fellow called Manasseh. And Manasseh was 12 years old when Hezekiah died. It's an interesting dynamic now because he's 12 years old, which means that God prefigured Manasseh when he was getting ready to take Hezekiah out. I started to see how old Hezekiah was. Believe it or not, he was 39 when God told him to get his house in order and he asked God for 15 more years. What God was intending to do was take Hezekiah out before Manasseh was born because Manasseh was 12 years old after Hezekiah got 15 more years from God, which means that God went against his own will in order to give Hezekiah more years when he knew that Manasseh was coming. It's an interesting dynamic when you can ask God for something and in spite of what he sees, he still blesses you with what you ask him for in spite of what his original plan was for your life. Somebody's got to have some insight with God that you can get God to operate on your behalf when he knows something negative is going to happen because he gives you more time. Somebody in this house has the power to talk to God when you don't have the power to talk to God. Because 
I can't get it done doesn't mean it can't be done. Because if somebody knows how to reach the throne on my behalf and cause God to move in my favor, I can only give him praise for putting people in my life who can touch the throne on my behalf. Oh, I feel like preaching now. I'm feeling better. Uh, give somebody a high five first out of seven and say, neighbor, I can touch God on your behalf. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I can't get to the president. I can't get to the senator. I can't get to the governor. But I can get to God. On I can get to God. It's interesting now because with all of his problems, he was acknowledged as one of the best kings. And it was distinguished as the greatest in faith. In 2 Kings, it says about him, he trusted in the Lord God of Israel. So that after him was none among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him, unquote. His trust in God distinguished him from everybody else simply because he didn't trust in his army. He didn't trust in his intellectual capacity. He didn't trust in his cognitive creative energy his trust was simply in God oh God I feel it here it's not about how good you look it's not about what you have in the bank it's not about the size of your house or the beauty of your car it's whether or not you trust in God oh it's scary to come up against somebody that trusts in God. I feel like preaching. It's scary to come up against somebody that will not raise a fist to you, but would rather combat you on their knees. When you've got somebody around you that can contact God, you better walk soft and tap them because God will take care of what is his. Oh, I feel like preaching today. He trusted in God from the Hebrew Bethel. And it, and it simply means to stretch out this word taught. It's the basic idea that comes from firmness and solidity, beta. It expresses that sense of well-being and security which results from having something or someone in whom to place confidence. I don't confide in me, but I confide in God. The Greeks picked it up in the Septuagint and the Greeks use the word to hope and the root of this word is to rely on God. It's the word Paul uses when he says, I'm fully persuaded. I've come through an event and through various circumstances until I've come to a conclusion that God and God alone is my strength. If I can't rely on you, I can rely on God to move somebody. Uh, can I preach like I feel it? Uh, uh, give, me, give me a little help. Come on, come on, help me. You see, you, you see, many times you think that people love you. And it's good to have somebody who loves you. But let me point out to you that one of the greatest things in the world is when God loves you through somebody. Now, you think the person is holding you. But it's actually God who is holding you through them. You see, God is the only one I know who can put people in your life to bless you because he wants you blessed. And he orchestrates their life in order to get to you. You don't know how much God puts folk through in order to qualify to deal with you. Uh, I feel it here. And so when other people are looking to people, you're looking to God. And when you depend on God, he always shows up. You cannot depend on God and he leaves you in a lurch. When you tell God I need you and only you can bring me out, I guarantee 
he will show up. Oh, I feel a church coming on here. He showed up for your mama when she prayed for you. Uh, I, I feel it. I know when you were in the club doing your thing, uh, mama was on her knees calling God for you. When you was high as a Georgia pine, uh, drunk as a skunk, uh, mama was praying for you. Uh, and God heard her prayers, uh, stepped in the club, upset your life, and brought you out, put you in a place you said you'd never be in. Uh, God! Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here. Uh, y'all, y'all rest a little bit. Uh, I can rely on God uh, because Jehovah is my supporter. Uh, his salvation didn't help. His background didn't help. Uh, his past was not conducive. His father was Ahaz. Uh, can I preach to you a minute? He had one of the worst fathers uh, that anybody could have. Uh, and yet still Hezekiah uh, had no pious training but only a heritage of weakness uh, in his moral fiber. But yet uh, he looked out of his weakness and looked to God. Uh, God brings us to a place where we discover it ain't about us. It's not about our ability. It's not about our ingenuity. It's just God. I'm looking at some people here. If it wasn't God, you wouldn't be here right now. I know you think you're smart. I know you think you're cute. But if it wasn't God, you wouldn't be here right now. The enemy planned to destroy you. The enemy connived to mistreat you. But God stepped in and thwarted every one of his plans. You should have been in jail now. You should have been locked up. You should have been on a bed of disease, dying with some incurable something. But God... Uh, I'm almost there. I'm feeling something moving here. Out of the heritage of his weakness, out of his immoral fiber, he had one thought, and that is God is my supporter. And when you got God on your side, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Ah, the young king communicated with his supporter. How else can he be supported or followed? Because Hezekiah now reminds me of Jabez. He talked to God. God was his supporter. So here comes the letter from Sennacherib. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord in Kings and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed. And here's what he said to the Lord. He said, bow down thy ear. Save us out of his hand that all the kingdoms of the world may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Now notice what he did. He didn't hide his problem. He didn't talk to anybody about the letter. He took the letter from Sennacherib and laid it out before the Lord. I've got news for you that your friends, or your enemies rather, and some of your friends too, who really don't like you. You know, you've got some friends that really don't like you. Every time God moves you a little further, uh, they move. Uh, and, and, and it's not like you stop talking to them because you've been blessed. You got blessed and they stop talking to you. I, I, I feel like preaching. It's not always that you got up and left them. You got up and they left you. Uh -huh. You see, everybody ain't glad when you're blessed. Uh, everybody's not happy when you're in love with somebody. Everybody ain't happy when you got married. Everybody ain't happy when you bought a new car. Uh, some of the folk closest to you can't stand you over what God has done in your life. And you need to tell them, don't take it up with me. <laughs> take it up with him. Uh, he's the one blessing me. And I'm not going to tell him to stop blessing me till you get happy with it. 
Uh, bless me till you get through. If my enemies don't like it, that's up to them. He spread it before the Lord. Because your enemies pray too. Because when they come against you, and they have the nerve to ask, will your God bring you out? Will God bring you out? And then so he goes by the record. It's the crisis of choice. He chose to forsake the idols and to depend on God. He purged the kingdom of idolatry and the crisis of being a reformer. And yet still at 39, God was ready to take him out. But there was one last stand. And that is Sennacherib comes by and now he is going to say to Israel, you better not take Hezekiah's word. Because what Hezekiah is going to tell you is that God, his God is able to bring you out. I feel the Holy Spirit. Bring me a chair. I, I, I'm going to go to work. It's an important piece now because anytime the ancients were fighting, it was not just nation against nation. It was gods against gods. Because everybody would pray to their God before they would go into battle. If you notice God speaking to Isaiah the prophet, he says, let me tell you something. There is no nation that can bring you down. If you come down, it's because I did it. Because I am God and beside me, there is no other. I've got news for you. When your enemies have the advantage over you, it's not your enemies. It's God chastening you in order to get you back to where he wants you to be. The reason is that none of your enemies can do anything to you unless they get permission from God. And anybody who needs permission is not in charge. I feel like preaching. Oh, you got to bless the old man, Jesus. The truth is, when anything comes against you, as a child of God, the only time it whips you is because God has allowed it in order to bring you back to a place that's stronger than when the enemy approached you. I've got news for you. All things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. I guarantee you that everything you've been through, when you get through it, you'll look back at it and give God glory because of what it made you. I feel the presence of the Lord. Oh yes, I know you cried when the man left. And I know you fell apart when the woman walked out. But now that you look back at it, you can give God glory. Because something about it kept you from being all that you could be. And God has a way of moving people out of your life who are stalemate in your life. And you won't move them out, but he will. And he'll hurt you when he move them out. But you give him praise after a while. And you lift him up and say, Lord, I thought it was evil. But it worked out for my good. And I just want to praise you for having my back. I feel like lifting him up. I feel like giving God the glory. Give somebody a high five for the second time. And say, let him do his work. Let him work on who he's going to work on. Let him move who he's going to move. Let him adjust the board. Let him set up your life. Let him open the doors of your opportunity. Let him fix what you think is not broken. Let him straighten it out. Because I hope and believe that the best of your past is going to be the worst of your future. I feel like lifting him up. I feel like giving God the glory. Give some money high five and say, neighbor, the best of your past is going to be the worst of your future. God's getting ready to take you higher than you ever been before. I'm not backing up because of Sennacherib and I'm not backing up from the king of Assyria, but I've laid his letter in front of God. 
I said, now, Lord, I need you to hear what they're saying about you as it relates to us. What they're saying, Lord, is you're not able to deliver us out of their hand. And they went down the record and showed that the other gods were not able to defeat them. And they're sitting around here bragging. And they're telling us, don't call on you because you don't have the power. Shake somebody's hand like you go shake it off and say, neighbor, my enemies are praying when they don't even know it. When they start talking about the God I serve, when they start putting him down and acting like he will not stand in my favor, I don't have to open my mouth and call him to come in. Keep on talking. Keep on putting him down. Keep on acting like I'm not going to make it so that he'll stir from his throne and show you that the God of Israel is not Baal, is not Ashtaroth, is not Damon, is not any of the other gods, but he's God all by himself. Give some money her time for the third time and say, neighbor, if it wasn't for the Lord, I would have been consumed. If it wasn't for the Lord, popular opinion would have wasted me a long time ago. But when folk put you down, God picks you. When folk walk on you, God takes you to the next level. And that's why you got to learn how to praise God for your enemies. Because I heard him when he said, I'll prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. And you better eat if I fix the food. Get some money high five for the fourth time. I say, if God's in the kitchen, I'm going to eat. Let my enemies, I feel like preaching, shake somebody's hand like you won't shake it off and say, neighbor, they're sick of me because I'm blessed. They're sick of me because I look good. They're sick of me because every time I turn around, the Lord sends me another blessing. They're sick of me because when they try to destroy me, the Lord lifts me up. When they try to sit on me, the Lord makes a way out of no way. Keep on talking. Keep on running your mouth. Saying what the God of Israel can do. The devil is a liar. You're about to move him to show you that the God that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Touch somebody for the fifth time. As they go to bed, honey, go on and sleep. Because God is watching over you. from destroying you and the God you serve is not able I saw God moving from his throne can I preach like I feel it look at your neighbor for the sixth time and say neighbor what did he say what did he say did you hear him did you hear him say that my God is not able the devil is a liar God got up off the throne and said, I'm getting ready to strike you for my people's sake. Let your enemies talk. Watch your mouth. Get some money high time for the last time and say, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. God's getting ready to show you that I'm God and beside me there is no other. God's getting ready to show up in your space and let the folk around you know that God is on your side. You might not see him, but I believe him and he is right there. The power is not in my mind, but the power is in my spirit. Come on, young man. I feel deliverance in the name of Jesus. Hey, in the name of Jesus, somebody
Give somebody a high five for the last time and say, God is on my side. It's not that I'm perfect. It's not that I'm wonderful. It's not that I'm special. But God decided to make his bed in my heart. And the victory is on. I would bring it to you. It is it is prayer. If, if prayer is designed to move God, then your enemies move him all the time. Because when they pick on you, they pick on your God. And that's why Joseph looked at his brothers and said, you meant it for evil. Oh, you thought you were going to kill me. But all you did was give me more life. Because when you walked away, God raised me up. What a God. What a concept. And I thought I'd bring it to you as one of the prayers this man having the nerve to say we conquered all the other people and their God didn't help them why you think your God gonna help you rose him up he struck their arm decimated them they went home with nothing behind challenging their God. I'm going to tell you, don't you sit around and live your life with a lot of guilt. When you've come to the Lord, he frees you from guilt. You see, the church, they say what they want about the city. 
it a refuge. Amen. This house is not designed Thank you, to make people feel guilty. Thank you. I don't care who you are, I don't care where you've been, I don't care what you've been through, what you've done. God does not intend for you to walk through these doors and feel guilty. He convicts of sin, but he forgives sin. Hear me when I tell you. And church people, nobody here has to defend God. God needs no defense by anybody in this house. Because he can handle his own defense, I promise you that. And he knows how to handle sin. And what he died to remove, he's not going to live with. He knows how to change your life and how to change mine. I don't care if you were stripping last night. You got your clothes on now. He knows how to forgive. And he knows how to move the individuals to another level of life. And let everybody paint them and taint them. It doesn't matter. Your enemies go to God, he sets you free. And I know when you're free. And let me tell you when you're free. When you can talk about it yourself. Amen. When you can say, yeah, I used to do that, but I don't do that no more. Not what you're going to say now. Amen. When God delivers you from childhood abuse, from all manner of difficulties, and I know when you're released, is when you don't walk in here and try to act like you ain't never been in the life. When you can open your mouth and say, the Lord brought me a mighty long way. And let your enemies talk about you. Just raise God up. I feel it here. Do I have anybody here want to talk about me? Talk. So the Lord can bless me this week. I need a special blessing. Talk. So the Lord can take me to a higher place. Talk. So the Lord can lift me up. Because that's the kind of God we serve. Keep on talking, man. And God ain't able. Yes, he is. Amen. <laughs> I'm through. You know it's something when you know, you know it's something when you when you have power with somebody who's powerful, and they get to talking about you, and you know this person loves you, and so you just let them read the text. Amen. Read this. Uh, all he did was lay the letter out before God. He said, you read this. Read this. Can you read this? This is what he's saying about you. Oh, immediately God rose up off the throne. Your enemies can be your best blessing. You hear me? Trying to hurt you and blessing you all the same time. Because he moves in. He said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. Order your copy of this powerful message from Bishop Noel Jones. When the enemy comes and he brings that upon you because you have had a relationship with God, what the problem does is forces you to go reverence with God. Now you're trying to frighten me because you're trying to destroy me. But instead of me just going on my own into death, you have have forced me to call on the one I know has the power. You are not causing me to capitulate. You're forcing me to pray. And since I can't fight you with my fists, I'm going to fight you with my knees. I feel like preaching in here. You can order a copy of today's message on CD or DVD. When you write to us, visit our website or call one 800 526 Noel. Get yours today. 
Bishop Noel Jones would love to have you visit the City of Refuge whenever you're in the Los Angeles area for any of our weekly services. For other CDs, books, or service times, write to us at Noel Jones Ministries, P.O. Box 11149, Carson, California, 90749. Visit our website at noeljonesministries.org. Or call 1-800-526-NOEL. That's 1-800-526-6635. Woo!